Today we're gonna to talk about Google resumes. And more specifically, I'm going to show you four real Google resumes that got people hired there. And we're gonna talk about what in each example is really good that you could borrow slash steal for your resume and make yourself really stand out as a candidate. Before we start though, I wanna make sure you understand this is just a piece of the puzzle of getting you that Google job that you want. 80% of those hired at Google were sourced. So that means you still have to go out and get a referral, you still have to go fix up your LinkedIn and all your other portfolio sites, whether it's your GitHub, your Behance, your Dribble, whatever you use for your profession. So this is not a silver bullet, but this is gonna get you well on your way by showing you super practical examples examples of what people did to get themselves hired. And all these resumes are publicly available to view on the internet. So you can look them up as well after we start to maintain people's privacy, even though they have posted it online, I have redacted information that I felt uh, was sensitive, even if they did not redact it where they posted it. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first resume here is a resume from uh, interaction design role. And even if you're not a designer, this resume is so excellently formatted. I can't recommend this format enough. First of all, even when you just look at it without even trying to read it, it looks really beautifully spaced out, designed, uh, and really makes it easy for you to read the different section, to distinguish between the different sections, uh, and actually to skim through it. So it really is designed for the reader, the recruiter in mind, and makes the recruiter's life really easy. Education is listed at the top here. It's a very clean format and does not include coursework, which is a thing that you should get out of the habit of doing. If you're listing your education, just list your degree in your university. Do not list which courses you're taking. Next, uh, looking at how an experience is listed, it's listed in a narrative format. And this is something that I see a lot, a lot with people that get hired at Google in particular. Um, this is something that's harder to do that bullet points and it requires considerably more effort to summarize your experience this way, but it's actually much more effective than bullets because it's much easier to skim for a recruiter uh, and also will allow you to sometimes list more positions on the page, uh, which could be beneficial for people who are having trouble with multiple pages. Um, in terms of skills, this is very masterfully done. Emphasis here is on hard skills, technical skills. And they're also, if you look at the very left of the page, beautifully organized. So you have skills between design, research, programming, and what are called uh, so, uh, hands-on skills. All of these skills are things that are hard to learn, hard to master, and paint this candidate to be extremely, extremely competitive. Um, and then at the very end, what I wanted to sort of put your attention to is, even though this is uh, a designer resume, it is not overly designed. There are some very minimal design elements, but they're really tasteful and really unobtrusive. They add value to making the resume more readable, uh, not more designy. So this is an excellent example of how you can incorporate design uh, and still have a very clean readable resume. Let's look at another one. This one is for a software engineer. So here there's no objective section and it skips right to experience, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. And you'll see again, they've used the narrative to describe their experience, not bullet points, uh, which is again, super common for people who get hired at Google. Um, the technical skills section and the education section are both really clean, very minimal. So there's no courses listed. Uh, when you look at the technical skills section, they are all hard, heavy technical skills to learn. None of like leadership skills, soft skills, or any other things like that. They're incredibly subjective and Google interviews for those. So if you kind of pass the bar of having the hard skills, you will get to show how much of the soft skills you have. And then the last thing here is this is a student resume. So it is a lot of emphasis on project work with a narrative description. And I wanted to show you this example because I really think that it's very excellently done, but the projects are described in a paragraph each and they are in their own section. They're not listed as work experience. It's kind of very clear distinguishing between all the different sections of the resume, what this person is doing right now and what, um, 
seniority level there might be looking for applying for a job. Um, so this is an excellent format. It doesn't look as visually stunning as the first resume, but it doesn't have to because it communicates very clearly and cleanly uh, this person's experience. The next resume is for an intern, and a lot of times people will wonder, well, how exactly am I supposed to put my experience down if I'm junior and I haven't done a lot of things? Well, here's how to do it, and someone got hired at Google by using this method. So first of all, you definitely can use spacing to your advantage by incorporating a clean design, having lots of white space, and just optimizing for readability. Again, you'll see that here there's no bullet points listed, and it is a narrative format of the resume. Um, also, there's a lot of emphasis here paid on skills. Uh, they are all technical skills and they are grouped like we saw in the first resume for ease uh, of kind of communicating to the recruiter. This is something that you can absolutely do to kind of buy yourself a little bit of space if you don't have a lot of experience. And of course, there's education and uh, any honors that you have. Again, in the education section, you'll notice that there's not a specific type of course listed or specific kind of clubs that this person was a part of. Um, this person definitely um, kind of kept the design really minimal and uh, was able to describe their experience um, really easily for the recruiter, even if they don't have a lot of it. So this is a beautiful example of what you could do as an intern. And a little bit more on the kind of engineering side. This is someone who uh, was an engineering intern at Google. And I think he described it best in his own words what his resume looks like. So this is a more traditional looking resume. This is also kind of an older example from a couple of years ago, but this is also a format that is absolutely okay as long as there's some discipline applied to it. So as you can see in the work experience, this person has very consistently listed free bullet points for each of pre their previous jobs and use the same format throughout for the selected projects, for the skills, everything just sort of aligns. Um, so this is absolutely all right to do. It is less desirable because it's more dense, but it is absolutely something that you could do as well. And when talking about his resume, this person described his resume as detailed and accurate. Um, and he talked about a lot of the effort that he put together to make this as detailed as possible. And I will link uh, below the video, the interview this person gave on how they put their resume together. Um, so you can read through it and read out some of the tips that he had for other people who are applying at Google. There you have it. That's all we have for you today on practical tips on getting hired in Fang. And this video was brought to you by Candor. We do salary negotiation for tech professionals. If you have an offer right now, whether it's from Google or from another company, you can always reach out. You don't pay us anything unless we increase your offer. So we'd love to take a look however your offer is competitive and give you some advice on how to handle it.